In this video, I will show you how to set up your application so that you can work with Backendless. So the very first thing that we need to do is to go into Gradle Scripts and go to your build.gradle file. So we need to add a compile part here. So the first thing that we need to do is to go and have a look at a website at Maven Repository. So you can go to this website, mvnrepository.com, artifact, com.backendless, and then forward slash backendless. And you can see here the, the version number of the current version, uh, the newest version. So you can see this one was updated July 2017. This is the newest version, 4.0.1. So if you then go back to your Android application, we can add that compile statement there. So I'm going to say compile, and it will be com.backendless, colon, backendless, colon again, and then 4.0.1. And then you're going to say sync now. Okay, then after the, the library has been compiled and your Gradle app or your app, your build.gradle module app is fine, everything is, is done syncing, uh, you can just quickly test it out if, you, if you've got the library and you can see there if you start typing back endless, I've got the library now as part of my project. So just to check if it's actu actually loaded that, that SDK. Okay, so now the next thing in order to set up, I like using a new Java class and uh, I, we call this the application class. So my app's name is back endless setup. So let, let me just call this one back end uh, application, whatever you want to call that class. But the main thing of this class is that your class should extend application, which is the application class of, of Android.app application. And then you can go to code override methods and you'll need the onCreate method there. So that's the onCreate method and inside of the onCreate is what we're going to do to initialize our back in this app. Okay, so now what we need to do is to go to the manifest as well. So you go into your manifest file and you can see there's an application tag. And now because this clause of ours extends application in that application tag, just go to it again. Somewhere there, you're going to add the name property and you can see automatically it picks up that backend application class that I just created. So now by doing this, the application knows that the application class for your application is this class and it will launch this class as the very first thing in your application, even before your, your first activity that will run. Your application class will run first. So this is a great place to actually set up and initialize your app to work with Backendless. Okay, so now what do we need to make Backendless work? So for Backendless to, to, to actually start working, uh, we need a few variables there at the top. So I'm going to say public, static, and I'm going to say final, and string, and then application. We need an application ID, and we're going to set that to a specific string value that we're going to get to now. So it's application ID. Then we're going to have a public, static, final, string, and we need an API key. And we'll get that from the website now. So we're going to go to the website now to get those. And then we also need a public, static, final, uh, also string. And we're going to call this one server URL. And then the server URL is actually HTTPS uh, colon two forward slashes API dot backendless dot com. So that's the URL that we're going to use. And then just after your call to super.onCreate, we're going to say backendless dot set URL. And the URL will be that server URL that we just created. Okay. And then we're going to say back endless dot init app, initialize the app. So the first argument there is to get the application context. So we're going to say get application context. The second argument is your application ID. So that's the one that we declared there at the top. So it's going to be application ID. And then the third one will be the API key. So that's all we need 
to make our back end list basically start working. So let's go and get the application ID and the API key. So if you log into your back end list account, you can actually go to your app. So if, you, if I go to the main page there, this is, this is the app that we created in the previous video. So you can go bound down to, or just make sure you click on that home button there, and there you can see the application ID as well as the Android API key. So the application ID I'm gonna copy there, and then I'm gonna open up, and that will be my application ID. Then I'm gonna go to the site again, and get the Android API key. Get the key, and that will be my API key. And then you're basically set up to go. So now, to authenticate your app right at the beginning, as soon as your application starts, it makes the connection to the server, it authenticates it with the application ID and the API key, and from there on, you can start using the library in your main activity or wherever you want to use uh, the library. So just to check if everything is up and running, we're going to just create some simple coding. So in order to save simple data to back endless, you need to a specific class or not a specific class but just a class which is a normal base class so let's let's just go with class person and let's say the person will have a private uh, string name and the guy will have a private string surname for example let's just have two fields there and a simple Java class so we're gonna say generate for me the constructor and let's select none there, so just the default constructor, or in fact the no argument constructor, and here we're just going to say name will equal be equal to null, as well as surname will be equal to null. Now I'll, I'll explain in a later video how exactly to create these classes, so I'm just going to quickly do this one so that we can test it. So you're going to go to generate, generate the getters and the setters for it as well, and this is all we need for now to test our application. So we're gonna have a name and a surname. The person object will be created and we're gonna set the name and the surname using the set name and the set surname methods. Okay, so now in the main activity, let's just quickly create a person object. So I'm gonna say person person equals new person. And then I'm gonna say person dot set name. Let's set the name to John. And I'm going to say person dot set surname, and let's say Rambo. Okay, so now we have we've created a new person object. So now, in order to save this object to back endless, I'm going to say back endless dot data dot of, and then you need to indicate the class. So I'm using a person class. And classes in in back endless or classes in Java refer to to, to tables in back endless. So if I'm saving this new person object, it will create automatically if there's no such a table in my database. Uh, it will, it's going to create this person database with columns for the name and the surname, which is quite nice. So I'm going to say, go to back endless and save the data as a person object. And I'm going to say dot save. And then you can see we need to pass in that person object and the second argument is basically doing something in the background. So it's the async callback. So I'll explain the async callback and so forth in a, in a new uh, video. So just for now to test if your application is working, um, basically what I'm doing now is I'm trying to create, if you go to the data part on the website, I will create a new table here called person and we're going to create a new entry inside of that database or inside of that a table with the name John and the surname Rambo. So let's run this quickly and see if it works. Actually, it won't work now because we still need to do one more thing. Quickly go to your manifest file and we need to add a user's permission here and you need to make sure that we've got permission to access the internet. Okay, I think it should run now. So let's just run the app quickly. Okay, so the app is run. Everything is fine. Remember, we're not we're not showing anything on the screen. So let's go to the back endless console where we had no app table. So if I refresh now, you can see the person table has been created. If you go to schema, you can see that. Um, let's just go to person quickly. 
then schema. You can see we've got a name and a surname. These are automatically generated columns, serial version, created, updated. And for the rest, it will be my own column name. So you just can see the column names now correspond to my person class, the name and the surname, which is quite nice. And then in that person, if I go to data browser, you will see that new object of mine. You will see that one entry with the name John and the surname Rambo. You can test it with something else also. Let's say Peter and then say Pan there. And if I run this again, and there it runs, go back to the website. Let's refresh this. We've got two objects now. The other one is Peter Pan. So yes, the application is working correctly. It's correctly set up. And that is it for setting it up. So in the next videos, we'll look at working with users. And then after we worked with users, we'll come back to see how these uh, normal tables work and how we can save data, create columns, how to set up the classes correctly, and so forth.